I have loved my Valve Index. It has been one of the best headsets I've used for many reasons, but over the past five months of very hard use and about 1,000 hours of actual on FaceTime, I've ran into quite a few problems, some big, some small, but here I am to talk about it and share all of my experiences so you can make sure that your index lasts as long as possible and avoid the mistakes that I have made. Okay, so I originally got my Index back in June in the first wave of pre-orders. It has maintained the spot as my primary headset for all this time. I absolutely adore the feeling of the Knuckles controllers and having really nice finger tracking in most games. The comfort of the headset itself is fantastic, the jump in field of view over my previous headsets was a welcome feature, and of course the audio is fantastic. However, I have also used my Index a lot to say the least. For everything from Pavlov to playing story-based games to hundreds and hundreds of hours in VR chat, honestly, I treat the Index kind of like a tool. Of course, I take really good care of it. It's an expensive piece of hardware, but I also rely on it like some people would rely on a car to get them to the workplace. But through all the hours and experiences, here's pretty much everything that has gone wrong, and I'll talk about RMAing or warranting things at the end of the video. So before you comment, yes, I'm aware that Valve will likely fix most of these problems for me. It's just not so easy in my position right now. So let's talk about my first issue that I've actually seen pop up quite a bit with other people as well, and it's regarding the Knuckles controllers. No, it's not a problem with my thumbsticks. I have had almost zero problems with that component. My problem lies with the triggers on the right controller. So the trigger basically has three input methods. One sensor detects if your finger's on the trigger at all, and that is registered as the finger tracking for your index finger. Next, you have the physical button press, which is a typical controller trigger. And lastly, the Knuckles detect how far you press in the trigger, and give a little haptic feedback when a button press is registered. Now, whether a spring is broken or something has broken internally within my controller, I don't know, but that final little haptic feedback button press no longer works at all on my right controller. SteamVR doesn't even recognize any button input for that specific feature. So yeah, of course that sucks. There was no specific trauma I could think of that would cause this to happening like punching a table or dropping the controllers. It seems like this happened mainly just due to using the controllers. I mean, think about it. I'm right hand dominant, so of course I'm using the right controller's triggers a whole lot, both for menu navigation and it's my trigger finger for shooters. It is, however, a bit of a shame that a pretty major component would fail based off of use alone after just a thousand hours. Now, I have already contacted Valve about it and we started the whole process, but if this is your main headset for the foreseeable future, this is one thing that you should certainly be watching for, especially while you're still in your warranty window. It is a wear item. Staying on the path of knuckles, if you do have thumbstick drift or clicking issues, talking with tons of other people that have made their controllers and got new ones recently, it does seem that nearly all of the original issues are mostly fixed. And if you've been waiting to RMA your knuckles, just get on it. Okay, my next issue has been the most annoying to me by far. My right index speaker has almost completely stopped working unless it's in a very specific location. This started about a month or so ago and I noticed when the speaker was in a certain spot that the sound would cut out and it really wasn't a big deal, but the problem got worse and worse over time and now I'm in a situation where the sweet spot to get audio from the speaker is so small that if I move my head at all, I just lose all audio in one headphone. Once again, I open up a support ticket and Valve gave me a solution that I was pretty surprised by. They wanted me to remove the speaker, swap sides and clean the contacts and see if the problem was solved. And it was about two days and the cycle repeated and so I once again started losing my audio. But this time it was my left ear of course. I repeated the procedure again just to put the right speaker back over my right ear, and I still just deal with the sound cutting in and out. At this point, I may just remove both sides and use headphones, but for an HMD that has such amazing audio, I hate to have to do this. I mean, for some people, the integrated audio is one of the biggest selling points over the Rift S, and you're paying a huge price premium if you're in that category. Once again, I can't think of any trauma at the time that would have resulted in my speaker failing, but Steam Support is working with me on this one, so hopefully a solid solution will come out in the end. Next up on the list is the only problem that I've seen that is completely my fault, but I wanted to include it just so people know what not to do and to be extra careful with one specific part of the index. The little piece of plastic on the back of the headset that holds your cable on the back of HMD did snap off after pulling a little stunt in VRChat on stream. 
that being a handstand and failing at it miserably. I have already talked about it a few times and I don't mean to sound like a broken record, but between breaking part of my pulleys and snapping this piece off, I'm guessing just due to the yanking of the wire, really it was just an extremely idiotic thing to do, and I understand that. However, this happened very recently and has nothing to do with the other two problems I talked about in this video, as both of them occurred far before this had happened. Really, I'm mentioning it to bring to light that that specific piece of plastic is pretty fragile and can break off relatively easily. I managed to affix the tether to the back of the headset in another place, so it's pretty much a non-issue, but at this time, it's not the fully intact index that it once was. I have lots of friends that like to dance intensely like breakdance or do handstands for example in VR chat or jump around in other games and I've seen twice this piece break off just from a small yank of the cable. So be very careful and mindful of what you're doing and how you're managing your cable. And don't be a freaking idiot and bust your ass easy. I'll also mention that there was no actual damage to any of my gear from the fall other than this one issue, which isn't that big. The headset and controllers didn't smack anything, and there was no actual impact on anything other than my own bottom. Okay, I have one last issue, and it seems to come up over and over and over again. Cleaning the index facial interface. It's kind of a pain. Between failing at Expert Plus songs over and over again, dancing in VR chat, and having some sweaty gamer moments in intense Pavlov off matches, yeah, well, things can get sweaty. If you have ever played sports before and had equipment that you use day in and day out, eventually that equipment gets pretty grody, and no matter how much you try and wash your football pads or shin guards, they're never quite the same after a season of use. Of course, I have encountered the same thing with the facial interface on the index. So I keep my house extremely cold, and I have fans running that usually keep me from sweating 99% of the time. But just due to the nature of having fabric on something like your face for hours and hours over months, really all it takes is a few soaking play sessions and really the thing will never be the same. I've had many people come to me asking how to clean the gasket and foam and yeah, there's just not a super easy way to deep clean it that doesn't go against Valve's recommendation. Basically, you can't use soap of any type. Here's what Valve said directly. To clean the fabric surface, use a soft, slightly damp, lint-free cloth. Gently wipe the fabric surface with the cloth to remove any dirt or debris. Do not spray cleaning liquid directly onto the unit. Do not use window cleaners, household cleaners, aerosol sprays, solvents, ammonia, abrasives, or cleansers containing gin, hydrogen, peroxide as a cleaning agent. Disinfecting, our suggestion would be to use an alcohol wipe for disinfecting. Wiping the surface of the fabric with an alcohol wipe will be the best way to disinfect the surface without introducing too much liquid slash damaging soft goods slash electronics. But what if your interface gets completely drenched? And what if it starts to smell like said sports equipment? You can't just wipe it down and expect it to not smell anymore. So I started running it under warm water and pressing out the water gently, then leaving it to air dry with the fan so there was the very least chance of any growth occurring. And I wasn't introducing any sort of heat or chemical to it that would degrade the materials and it sort of works but to be honest it just needs replacing at some point so what's my actual complaint here well the materials used are extremely comfortable and i love them but it is a t-shirt like material with foam on the inside it soaks things up and there's not a great way to deep clean it that won't destroy the fabrics so this is something to consider as another wear item I think it's about time for me to just pony up and buy another replacement facial interface gasket or wait for the rumored VR cover that's coming to the index. Not just the cloth pad, but an actual gasket replacement, and if that rumor comes true, then that would be sweet. I guess it totally makes sense. If you wear a shirt every day for a couple hours, it's going to get worn and dirty, and the material will start to break down the more you wash it. So I guess it's no different regarding a component like a facial interface. It's just something that you should definitely consider, because eventually, if you use it enough, you're going to want to get another gasket. So after all these issues and the good times and the bad times, how has my experience really been with the index? Well, besides the couple of problems that I've had, two of them being hardware failures, one being a normal wear item, and the other one being completely my fault through slightly abusive actions, I gotta say, it's still going to stay as my main headset. Once these problems are sorted out, so likely new controllers, a new headset, or just a new speaker, and buying a new facial interface, I am pretty confident that I will easily get another thousand hours plus 
plus out of this headset. To top it off, Steam support has actually been very helpful. It's just hard for me to send off the index for a couple weeks and not be able to stream or make videos using my normal hardware setup. I know lots of people that have had to RMA their index for all sorts of weird problems from base stations failing to thumbstick issues, but these are just the problems that I have personally encountered after all this time and usage. Not saying that you will necessarily, but these are just a few things that I really think that you should keep an eye out for. At the same time, I wouldn't let any of these things necessarily hold you back from buying an index. In my honest opinion, it's still the best headset that you could buy out there as a full package. Have you had any of these issues, or are there problems that you had that I didn't discuss at all? Let me know about it, I'm actually pretty curious. Alright, well I hope you enjoyed. Don't forget to like this video if you loved it, subscribe if you want more of this, and hit that freaking bell if you just can't live without it. Much love, thrill out.